The empirical formula represents the most reduced form for a compound, whereas the molecular formula represents the actual formula for that compound. Now, if we're comparing them side by side, we're going to say again, your molecular formula represents the actual formula of your compound. And here we have N2O4. The empirical formula is the reduced form. Both 2 and 4 are divisible by 2. So when you divide them both by 2, we get NO2, which represents the empirical formula. Next, we have C6H12O6. Each one of these numbers is divisible by 6. So the empirical here would be CH2O. And then finally, this last molecular formula can't be reduced any further. So in this case, the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same thing. Now what's customary for an empirical formula type of question is they tend to give you information of the atoms within a compound either as percentages or even as grams. Doesn't matter the case if it's in percentages or grams, your end result has to be in moles. Here I'm giving you 26.8% tin, 16% chlorine, and 57.2% iodine. We assume that this is out of 100 grams of a compound, so automatically change these percentages into grams. All we're going to do now is divide them by their atomic masses, which you find from the periodic table. So each one of these numbers here comes from the periodic table. The grams would cancel out. And you have moles left at the end for each. This leads us to step two. So in step two, you would divide all the moles that you found by the smallest moles present. Out of the three amounts of moles that we found, 0.2258 would be the smallest. So all those moles get divided by that number. This gives us the atomic ratio of each element within that compound. So here our empirical formula would be SnCl2I2. So these are the typical types of steps you take to solve any type of empirical formula question. Now sometimes they may ask you to find the molecular formula once you've found your empirical formula. To solve there, you would just say molecular mass, which they'll give to you within the question, divided by the empirical mass gives us a variable n. Now the empirical mass comes from the empirical formula that you've found out in part two. So this is your empirical formula. So you'd find the mass of all of those elements together. Here, once we found that, we're going to use that n value and multiply it by the empirical formula to give us our molecular formula. So we're told that the mass of the compound is this. We've added up to 10 the chlorine and the iodines to give us our empirical mass this. When you do that, you get 2. So then you just multiply your molecular formula by that number, and that gives you your molecular formula. So these are the customary steps in order to find the empirical formula or the molecular formula. And remember, the molecular formula is just the actual formula of the compound, and the empirical formula is the reduced form of the compound. If you want additional practice in terms of this concept, make sure you take a look at our chapter videos as well as concept videos that cover the topic of empirical formula.